Good morning, Professor. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation. I have just quick questions about uh, the recent situation in Europe and Slovakian position uh, in European Union and some internal questions also. Um, uh, as a politician, how do you see Slovakia after 15 years membership of EU? Well, I think Slovakia is a successful story and we proceed very well in economic and social terms. Of course, there are social problems, social inequalities, and some uh, lagging uh, behind the Western uh, countries. But it's natural, and I think that as regards uh, economic growth, as regards the minimum wage, uh, the unemployment, and other social economic figures, we are on very good level, and I think we are a successful story. Uh, of course, there are some problems also in democratic and uh, to, uh, rule of law and uh, other issues which are typical for every uh, post-communistic country. But uh, in general, I think that uh, everything is going uh, well and there is a big progress in Slovakia. Thank you very much. My next question is if you compare the benefits and tasks from EU, uh, the, from the Union. Slovakia, do you think in this situation they won? Or, I mean, for example, you stated recently that uh, the, more than 40% of the respondents in the survey, I don't know the, which survey it is exactly, uh, they said that in Slovakia or in European Union the people were living better in communist uh, regime or like Soviet Union time. So how you can yeah. uh, express this statement? This, this was the survey uh, of the focus uh, from March uh, 2018. Uh -huh. uh, the focus is the, the survey agency and they asked the, to people uh, if they consider, uh, how they consider socialism, I mean the real socialism from the, the post-war period. And they told 42.6% uh, uh, of Slovakian population said that it was better than capitalism because it uh, gave uh, to people the labor, uh -huh. work, uh -huh. and uh, social social security. And this is very important for Slovak people and that's why there is kind of disappointment from this capitalistic and very pro-market and individualistic society. Uh, but the people in Slovakia are quite realistic as well. So it means that uh, they probably know that the return of communism or this kind of socialism which was here or in Hungary as well mm -hmm. is probably possible. So uh, they are thinking like, okay, maybe in many social issues it was better, mm -hmm. but let's do better now during this kind of regime. Uh, and. Um, we cannot be just uh, utopistic, European uh, capitalism cannot work uh, so social like was socialism, but it can be more social. And the European social model is a big um, inspiration for us, especially for the government at our party of social democratic uh, uh, leaning. And that's why we are trying to make more social progress, more social gifts, more social rights to the people and so on. Uh, I don't mind if we take uh, some inspiration from the former regime. I, I absolutely uh, but not totally, realize the partially you agree. I mean, really? not all aspects, yes, or like the partially take, like mix. Of course, of course, of course we don't want to, to build the gulags. <laughs> I, I, I just want to uh, tell that we, we need to follow the social rights and social uh, security, which was very good uh, during the former regime. And many things for, for the working people were better. And this is just the fact. Of course, this doesn't mean that uh, we want to have the undemocratic regime or something like this. But uh, not to speak about the social progress during the post-communist regime, it's just ideological and very, very stupid. Uh, that's why I'm trying to find some inspiration also here to make Europe and Slovakia more social. And this is the aim of any left-wing party. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, thank you very much. Well, my next question. Let me go to the next question. The, about my migration quota system by the the Brussels. So you mentioned that there are the 
So there should be alternative and efficient uh, solution rather than obligatory quota system and migration based on the solidarity principles of EU. Could you tell us what is that solution? <laughs> Well, Slovakia came with the idea of effective solidarity or flexible solidarity. That means that, that this kind of uh, uh, redistri redistribution of people, uh -huh. of living people, how it was proposed by this quota system, uh -huh. is just because you just cannot take uh, people who go, who go to Germany or Sweden or Great Britain because they want to live there because they have the communities, they have better living standards and better life there and their families there. You cannot just, just take them like uh, they are the bags of potatoes and mm -hmm. to put them to Hungary or to Lithuania or to Slovakia uh, where they don't want to live. So this is absolutely unhumanitarian and I, we propose a different uh, kind of solution. Like, okay, these people should uh, go where they want to live, but at the countries uh, which are more poor or which are not the destination and the post community countries are not the destination countries for these people, uh, mm -hmm. should uh, be soli in solidarity in different way. So, for example, to help with economic resources or to, to make more more policemen uh, on the borders because uh, we need to protect the borders. This is very important because otherwise it will be the irregular immigration and people in our countries will be more and more frustrated and this is not good, especially for the kind of parties which are on the left of the of the uh, on the center of the center, because this is really good, especially for the far right parties, because uh, they can uh, live with this frustration and to uh, push it and uh, make a really bad fascist re uh, um, solution. So, so this is, he... I think, really realistic to be re in solidarity, but not in kind of quota mathematic way, like redistribute people, because we, the technocrats in Brussels, just said it. This is not good. So you mean this background of the individuals should be considered as a priority? The uh, like the work experience or origin or something? Uh, and when we are talking about the, the individuals, you mean you mean migrants, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when yeah, we, are yeah. Migrant, uh, we are talking about uh, first of all uh, humanitarian aspect. Uh -huh. So if the refugees, of course, they have the right to be settled in the European country, which is the first of their way. So it is Italy or Greece or Spain or Slovakia as regards the Ukrainians mm -hmm. and so on. This is the Dublin and I think it's all right. And uh, then you have these economic migrants. And uh, economic migrants means that uh, they don't have a right to be a refugees because mm -hmm. there is no war or some kind of uh, um, political or ideological uh, punishments for them in their country mm -hmm. and it means that we should choose like who we want to have here and uh, there is no human right to be um, to, to be moved from one country to the second country mm -hmm. you just can cancel the borders that's why we are talking about the protection of borders mm -hmm. it's our national right it's sovereign right of any country to say I want to have these people and not these people on my uh, territory and this is something which cannot be changed by the European technocrats. This is just the rule. It's the democracy. It's the it's the sovereignty. And I don't think that it cannot be. I don't think that it can be changed uh, without the approval of our people, because it would be just a kind of imperialism. Thank you very much. Uh, let me jump to my next question. Uh, do you believe that, the, based on the the crime actions or terror attacks in the recent years in Europe? Uh, the mainly key politicians can judge on uh, any member based on these actions. For example, uh, to for example, the recently you also mentioned judge the the minister of the Germany foreign affairs. The the Bratislava is some dangerous place to live. So how you can uh, the judge this kind of how to say the opinions from the politicians, not from the people actually. And particularly also, if you take into consideration recently, like a journalist crime and also the, some expat uh, the killed in the recently this month. So how do you think it is fair to judge based on these uh, actions or crimes any place well, as a dangerous? I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it if we are talking uh, about politicians. Of course, the ordinary people can speak uh, each other whatever they want, but if you are a politician, especially if you are Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, and the ministries of foreign affairs just want to have good relations with each other because it's good for our countries and mm -hmm. relations. Uh, they, they shouldn't uh, tell to, to their 
citizens that, for example, as you said, Bratislava is not uh, safe because of one murder, because then, then we can ask how it was in Berlin with this terrorist attack, how it was in, in, uh, in Colin with this violence uh, of these uh, people, hordes of people trying to rape the women. And you remember these cases? Yeah, yeah. I, I I never I never, said, I never said that Germany is not safe. I never said that these countries should be blamed for this this uh, occasionally uh, violence. Because yes, uh, to to be very to be very honest, shit happens sometimes everywhere. But you cannot just say that these countries are on. If it is kind of the kind of trend, mm -hmm. like any day, any uh, is one a murder, like in uh, southern Sudan. Or in uh, Western uh, Eastern Congo. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's ask about it. But uh, Slovakia or Germany or Czech Republic, Hungary. I don't think that this is a good way, and this is just good way for populists, and it can be very very easily misused. So that's why let's let's follow the respect to each other. Okay, thank you. Let me continue also with the Germany. If you look at the st official statistics, I see that Germany has a more than twenty percent share in the Slovakian trade, in both important trade, uh, export. Do you think that is a current picture of the trade and economy meets Slovakians' expectations before when they join the EU? And seemingly does this make challenge and limits the trade with the Russia, actually? <laughs> I mean, with, uh, you being in Europe. <laughs> um, being in Slovakia, um, uh, as regards uh, economic, uh, in economic terms, uh, Slovakia in these days has no other alternative than the Germany and the European Union because uh, you know that we are so dependent on the German, French, Czech and Austrian and, and Dutch market yeah. uh -huh. that it's absolutely impossible to, ta to say that okay we are just uh, going away bye bye and we are just want to be poor like I'll, I don't know Kazakhstan no this is not probably the way I like Kazakhstan, of course, but it's not so, so rich like Slovakia is now, fortunately. So that's why, uh, of course, the European Union and the European market is so important for us. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we need to exclude uh, other partners and other friends. Russia is very important culturally, politically and economically for us. And we don't want to just beat them, Russians, like uh, many Russophobes in the Western capitals. And I don't like it, again. Uh, Russia uh, liberated us from the fascism in the Second World War. There are many people in Slovakia who really love the Russian culture and the Russian politics. And I don't think that we should be like uh, aggressive on Russians. We should make uh, trade, we should make uh, cultural relations and very good political relations. Mm -hmm. I don't like sanctions against Russia. I really, I'm, I oppose it and I think in Slovakia, especially the former Prime Minister, Mr. Fico, was always against these uh, sanctions uh, and this economic war. I believe in peace and I believe in diplomacy. And that's why this is not a question about if we want to be uh, oriented to German economy or Russian economy. We can be oriented to both. Mm -hmm. for, for sure, for Slovakia, the German economy is much more important in this constellation. So uh, this with this statement, but do you, you support, let's say, somehow the partially uh, the capital <laughs> business, the world, let's say, no? So you believe that the trade is important in the real world, yes? Of course. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the realism. This is, this is how the works work. And uh, when you see that uh, uh, all the countries which are talking very nice speeches about the human rights in Russia, in, mm -hmm. in China, in other countries, or Saudi Arabia, but on the other day they make the arm trade, they, uh, they make big uh, trade and big commerce, uh, commercial relations with China, with Saudi Arabia, with Russia, with everybody. And it depends. It's Great Britain, it's United States, it's France. Very, very humanitarian speeches, but in reality it's about trade. Money, so, uh, money is first. <laughs> I don't really think that uh, you cannot be different if you are in the country. You just cannot uh, sacrifice your people and your uh, living standards in your country uh, because of human rights when you see that nobody else is doing this. And this mm -hmm. is something which uh, any realistic politicians must accept. Uh, I don't like the situation in Saudi Arabia, for example, and what they are doing in Yemen. It's just terrible, and I, I am just shocked that the Great Britain is selling the arms to them, for example, or they are the friend of the uh, United States of America uh, while doing these this massacres in the Yemen. But so, this is the reality, and uh, uh, we need to criticize it. 
Mm-hmm. But of course, we can change it as a, as a small country. So we are talking about trade, how it is in capitalism. Yes, it's it's the situation. We just want to make a better life for the people. First of all, for Slovakian people, because this is our our main challenge. But of course, we are very, very much interested in the people of all the world. Thank you very much, Professor. Just my, uh, we talked about this America. Why do you, why you don't support the expansion of the the com- American companies, from particularly from US, in you, what can be main disadvantage if they have more later access to the single market? I was, I was very, very much opposed to the transatlantic uh, treaty in investment agreement TTIP. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am also opposed to CETA with Canada, not because I don't like America or I don't like Canada, but they have different model. They are, they have this uh, liberal or neoliberal model of economy. Mm-hmm is um, much more based on these private corporations and private power. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am left-wing politicians and I don't like uh, this kind of model. Europe has different model. We have European social model, have a European green model, mm-hmm. which is very tough on the social standards, on the labor codes, on the green uh, uh, or ecological uh, measures. And we are very, very strong, for example, in the labor uh, rights or mm-hmm. the workers' rights. Uh, if you are in the America and you are corporations, you don't have so much pressure from trade unions or, or from uh, the tax uh, taxing of the state. So your products will be cheaper in the end, maybe. Uh, if these corporations will come to the European Union uh, with this uh, model uh, under TTIP, which was uh, which mm-hmm. was uh, on the table, it will be disastrous for the European companies because we we are more social, we are more uh, green. But in the end, we we can't compete with this uh, American competence, with this with this neoliberal model, and this uh-huh. is the problem. So that's why we need to protect our European social model uh, behind not only Americans or American corporations. And it depends also on the, uh, it is includes also the problems with the protection of food security. For example, Monsanto as one big corporation is doing uh, using this NGO, this um, uh, genetically modified organisms. Uh, this is not a tradition in the European Union. We don't like it, we don't want it, and it's a threat that it can be spread. So this is something we need to protect, and that's why I'm not a fan of this uh, liberal, uh, neoliberal globalization, like no, mar- no borders, or capital can flew from one uh, space to another. It can be very damaging on the social. But you support, you support the partially access with some adaptation to the, the lo- European rules or law, yeah? If they well, if, obey some the rules, follow the rules. If, if the, all the world uh, will uh, wo- would work uh, or would process uh, process uh, like the European social model, there is no problem. Mm-hmm. If, if in Honduras they have the same labor codes like in Sweden mm-hmm. or in uh, Singapore or in uh, Thailand have the same uh, labor rights or workers' rights like we have, there mm-hmm. is no problem. But if not. There can be uh, the the there is a very very big uh, threat that the race to the bottom will start. Race mm-hmm. to the bottom meaning like you have uh, uh, I would say a war social social rights or war social code in your country. Mm-hmm. So you are more you are better in competence because your product is cheaper. But this is this cannot be the way for our because in the end it would be like that Hungary and Slovakia or German workers would uh, uh, have the incomes like uh, the people in Indochina, because mm-hmm. it's cheaper for the products. So this is not the way how the sh- world should work. That's why I'm not opposed to globalization. I'm opposed of this type of globalization, of these neoliberal globalizations without any rules, which is good for corporations and banks and the mm-hmm. big powers, but not for the small players and for the people and working people. That's why I, I'm much more inspired, for example, of this model of globalization, which was after the world. It's Bretton Woods model, mm-hmm. where the capital yeah. controls that, where the where the state has the power to make uh, uh, autonomous economic policies because they have the sovereignty. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just I, I can just follow the arguments of Danny Rodrik, he's the Turkish-born American economist, and I think he is true in this. We don't need uh, maximum globalization. We need smart globalization. That's why I called myself anti-globalist, anti-globalist, and I wrote a book now about it, and uh, I, where it will be translated in English, I will send you a copy. Yeah, you mentioned it will be in December, yes? It will be written by December. Hopefully, hopefully. it's oh. being translated. It's not so easy as I hope, as I hoped before. Uh, uh, I think that uh, it will be in the beginning of the next year. It's more realistic. 
Okay, thank you very much, Professor. My my last question, actually, I wouldn't, I was really hesitating to ask this question, but if you don't mind, let me ask this question. When I was checking your background, uh, and also you mentioned now the Yemen conflict by Saudi Arabia or Western powers, so you are, uh, let's say, you are against this involvement, like invading the, any country. If you have any, then if you do that, how you can support? Uh, for, for in favor of the in Karabakh conflict, uh, I'm from Azerbaijan, that's why I'm asking this question. You are this in favor of the Armenians uh, in this conflict, and there there are the the UN Security Council, uh, the the for for uh, for the documents accepted as a, considered the Armenian forces as a external power as a military powers. I mean, so they should leave the territory as soon as possible. It was 1993 before uh, the documents accepted. So, I mean, in this approach, uh, your approach something like not clear for me, not, let's say, efficient. How Could you please share? I mean, if you're against the, any investment uh, involvement in a country, and if you support the territorial integrity, how you can support in this case, Armenia? Well, uh, this is not something uh, which is uh, like my issue uh, of... of uh, Trying to intervene to the to the uh, Armenian Azeri conflict. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it was the question of the Council of Europe, mm -hmm. which had uh, the, the resolution against Armenia from Azerbaijan side. When I was involved, because I am the part, I am the member of the Council of Europe of the Parliamentary Assembly, yeah. and at the time Vice I was President. very sure. Mm -hmm. I was very sure that the Azerbaijani resolution against Armenia is not fair because it was one sided. That's why I was opposed to this. And this is just this issue which was uh, presented. Uh, of course, I am in many ways uh, very friendly to Armenia because I like this country in many ways, but I don't have anything against Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is also a beautiful country. Uh, this is just the ge geopolitics in many ways. And sometimes in such resolution, I will be on this position. In other ways, I can be on other position. This is just about my rational analysis of this situation. So what is I the wrong? If it just really it is interesting for the audience, what is the wrong in these documents? I mean, if you, if you just just we would like to know. Not not in these documents. It was just one resolution. It was like two years ago in the Council of Europe. I I don't remember the details, but mm -hmm. I remember that it was very one-sided. But what is my point is. Of course, I want just the peace between Armenians and mm -hmm. Azerbaijani. Uh, after the Soviet uh, resolution or after the end of the Soviet uh, Union, there are many, many problems which cannot be just uh, uh, solved uh, so easily. How it was in Yugoslavia, again, it was a very special case, so generous in many ways. It is the same in, in, uh, in Crimea case, for example, in Ukraine. And also in Azerbaijani and Armenia, you can... Uh, you cannot just make one one uh, solution for everybody. So that's why I hope that there can be a dialogue between you, uh, I mean, uh, Azeris and, and uh, uh, Armenians. So you support these like, talks, yeah. And this is this is the solution. So okay. always, when uh, one side will be more assert assertive or more aggressive, I will be on the side of the weaker side. Uh, sometimes this is my maybe, and uh, will be I will be very honest. My, my first persuasion is not about the nationalities. I, I like all the nations. I don't have, maybe in football, I like sometimes more one team or second team. But in politics, I always like uh, the weaker. Mm -hmm. The weaker, usually the weaker nations, the weaker, weaker peoples, which are not so rich, which are maybe not so populated and so on. And then maybe in these cases, this is the issue why I sometimes uh, am more symp sympathizer for Armenia because they are in this position. But, uh, the, the same is for Israeli and Palestinian. I, I like Israeli, I like Palestinians. It's not about the uh, sympathies. It's about that I see that the Israeli is more powerful and sometimes it's uh, exploiting their power against Palestine, which is, which is more weak. In every, every case, I'm trying to, to, to follow this logic, uh, to protect the weaker side. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. I, I, I really, I'm really not opposed to Azerbaijan. This is not the case. Thank you very much, Professor, answering my out-of-topic question. <laughs> actually, I had to ask this question. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for hard talk, actually. <laughs> I believe you enjoyed also this talk. Yes, no so, problem. And if you have something, some, some output from this, just uh, send me and I'll be very happy to, to cooperate. <laughs> okay, I, I, will, I will keep in contact for the further details. Thank you very much, Professor. So we are at the end, yeah. end, so we should... We, because of time limit, we should finish now.
Thank you very much, Thank you. Professor. Thank Have you. a nice Thank day. You. Bye. 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 Bye.